uh, Scout Knowledge uh, from Egoism. Welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Good to be here. Yeah, so tell me about your 2020. How has the pandemic uh, affected uh, your music making? Um, music making, it's been good, I would say. Um, I don't think we've been this productive ever. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's kind of like, that's what not going out will do. You're a bit like, we're both the type of people that can't really, well, especially me, can't quite relax at home. Like, it's a bit of like a, I need to do something. Um, and that thing has always been making music. So it's just been more time to make music in that regard. But a lot less time for making any kind of money to support that music, yeah. AKA playing shows. So that's pretty much the gist of 2020 so far for egoism, really. Yeah. What about you, Scout? Uh, how do you handle having time on your hands? Uh, well, I actually have been very busy, to be honest, because I kept working during the pandemic. So I was working the same amount. And in fact, I was actually having to do a lot more traveling for work because instead of meeting at an office, I have to meet my clients at their houses. And so sometimes I was like traveling like up to four hours a day to do a five hour shift. Wow. So to be honest, I actually haven't had free time. To be honest, I actually have been more busy, I would say. Yeah. And I've had just more responsibilities, more stuff happening with my family and personal life. So yeah, it's actually been pretty full on. So everyone's like, oh, a year where I can indulge in stuff. And I'm like, no, <laughs> not really for me. <laughs> So yeah, music, I'm like, I need to put more time into music, like da 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 da. So yeah, that's me. Uh, Egoism has a great uh, <laughs> dream pop sound. Uh, who were the artists that influenced you into that direction? Do you want to go, Scott? Sure. Um, I would say when I, when I was a teenager, I got super into like Radiohead and then I got really into like Beach House. And then, like, at the end of being a teenager, I was into, like, shoegaze. I don't know. I was into heaps of stuff like that. And so I think I just ended up sort of floating where a lot of the people who liked that music and that genre of sort of alt-pop rock into dream pop. And I think that's, like, honestly just the music I love making. And I wouldn't say we're strictly dream pop either. I feel like we're kind of an amalgamation of genres. And I think more and more we're sort of leaning into newer genres and like stretching what I would call dream pop in a sense but you know I would say the same thing I think we're a real amalgamation of all the music we've listened to throughout our lives like you know because it's been like you know we used as teenagers we were real indie kids real like listening to only indie bands and kind of you know the small stuff and then kind of coming into adulthood, it was a bit like, I think our music tastes like diversified intensely. So now it's like, you know, now we're listening to stuff on SoundCloud with under a hundred plays and citing it as references to our mixing engineer, but we're also citing the latest Ariana Grande album or something like that. Cause it's just like good music is good music. And it's like, I don't know. I think there's something to be said about, there's something really nice about being a teenager and where you feel this kind of connection to your influences as a musician and you feel like you have to honor that but I also like being in this new space where you don't you care like anymore whatever. yeah you like whatever you like and it's like unpretentious just loving music you're just like this is cool and you don't care exactly um, you started writing songs together at school I believe um, what do you know about songwriting now that you didn't know when you started out? <laughs> so oh. much. Oh my God. Far out. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't even, I it's, it's like, it's, it's almost an instinctual knowledge, isn't it? It's just kind of like, we just, it's hard to explain. Like, like the ability we didn't used to be able to write songs. When we first started writing, we literally just couldn't do it. We would sit down, we'd try to write a song, and we just, nothing would happen. Um, 
So, I mean, I don't know, like it is that kind of like instinct, like tr I guess like trusting yourself in a way. If I had to say we've learned anything specifically, like we now very much trust ourselves to write good stuff, but that feels very vague. It's hard to say, honestly. I can, I can say some specific stuff that I've learned. Well, like I think definitely what Olive said is true, like general, just getting more confident in it and sort of creating routines on how to do it. But I would say specifically, I remember as a teenager, really, because I was such a music nerd, I learned all these songs and then would be like, oh, well, all of these specific songs, they all use the same chord progressions and they use these open chords. And I can't do that because I don't want to write the same old boring generic songs. So I've got to write all these really complicated songs. And I would just add all this crazy, like the minute fifth and, you know, would put it in a pentatonic scale and it would be a terrible song. Like it would have been like this nice song if I just let it have a G chord in it. But I was like, no, I have to be cool. And I can't write what everyone else is doing. And I'm, I don't really care anymore. Like I, I, I don't care if I've written a song in the same chord progression. I don't care if it reminds me of something else. I think it's kind of like, as long as I'm expressing myself truly, I think that's cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys have got uh, an EP coming out uh, on, on our minds, uh, which was funded by uh, Triple J. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, could you have uh, recorded this EP without that? No. Or, yeah, no, not really. Like, not in the same way. I mean, we would have had to cut so many corners to the point where it just wouldn't have really worked. And I think especially like, I mean, the place that it really like, cause I mean, we used, we used most of the money on promotion actually. Um, so that was the kind of thing I think we wouldn't have, it would have just taken another long while cause we would have had to wait till we saved that money so that we could spend it on, you know, getting it out there. Um, I would also say like we had to, we also didn't have the money to get it mixed properly or mastered properly or yeah do any because like I think people underestimate how much money it is to get something released as well you know to get the photos to look good to get having like album art to have it being able to go onto Spotify playlists like having you know what I mean all that sort of stuff like it, it costs money and <laughs> unfortunately and I think especially when you're starting out and people don't know who you are, you have to kind of get that stuff to get going so that people can find you. And if we're going to like put all this time and effort into our songs, we want it to be able to be reached by people. Yeah, I would say the same. It's kind of a bit like, it's a rude shock at first when you like figure out how much money is kind of going into kind of making the machine turn and stuff like that. But then it's just like, you kind of realize that everyone everyone does it like it's kind of the especially i don't know maybe it's different in other places of the world but it feels like especially in australia there is a real kind of um like everyone hires pr and you know runs facebook app, like puts hundreds of dollars into facebook ads and it's a huge investment really like yeah it's quite shocking yeah, uh, I believe today you uh, debuted the final s single, uh, Happy. Um, tell me about that. Yeah. Well, I wrote Happy um, or, or like last year, a little bit before then. And it, it was a really funny song because I just, it just was really sad. I got off this phone call with someone very close to me. And I was just like, just, just singing out these lyrics. And I just realized I was saying, I, I, I wish you were happy. Like, just because my friend was having this hard time and it was like, that's all I wanted. It was just this pure, like, uh, just sort of like that, that the weight of when somebody's relying on you when they're not feeling good and how like that also causes you to feel bad, but also that pure desire of wanting them to feel better. So that's sort of where it came from. And then it, it just started off with this chorus and then like the verse came and everything just flowed in this really lovely way. And I wrote it with the guitar. So the guitar line is all written around the tuning dadgad that we use. 
and I'd just gotten this new guitar and it was just like, it just, everything came together really beautifully with that song. So I held it really close because sometimes I feel songs don't always come like that. They don't always come all together with such a strong, like melodic as well as lyrical and instrumental part as well. Yeah. Tell me about the guitars mm. uh, that you use. Um, on, on, ha on, the song happy in fact pretty much every song we use either my jazz master scouts jaguar and then i have a fender lead too um that i use I also, for have the a I also have a maiden what is it ms50 or something ms500 oh. we don't record with oh, we do sometimes. Oh, oh yeah we did on um never leave yeah yeah we recorded with that one of those um you heard me. Yes. yes. You can yes. see all the guitars there. Yeah. Good guitar. It just kind of doesn't always, yeah, it hasn't always worked. But we record, we do a lot of, um, we've done a lot of live stuff with it um, because it kind of tends to kind of, you know, those, those humbuckers like tend to be good for a live sound. They like fill it up. But once you've got the multi track ability, it's a bit like you want a lot of different thin guitars kind of in different spots. Which is why the Jazz Master and the Jaguar are so amazing, because they just kind of really stick out, and they're just the, the best guitars out there, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Scout, when um, you uh, did the Six Quicks uh, video for us, I think last year, uh, you were saying that you you were searching for an app that you could carry around. Did you uh, finally get one? No. No, I haven't. I haven't even sold that amp that I was lamenting about. It's still sitting there with all the pictures with me ready to stick it on Facebook Marketplace, but I just haven't done it yet. I know, I'm you, terrible. You switched to I'm bass. I'm a procrastinator. That's what happened. Yeah, also, yeah, I switched to bass. I'm playing bass live now, so, I mean, I don't even really have to take it around because the great thing about bass, oh, if there's no bass amp, you get to stick it into a DI. <laughs> No one cares. And no one cares. No one cares. No one notices. So especially with the music we play, it just doesn't matter. It's great. I love no. it. Oh, it's freeing. I feel like I we have such a dark bass tone as well. A lot of the time, like our, it really suits the D. I mean, all of our recorded basses are DI'd anyway. All of our recorded guitars are DI'd. I use a, I use a um, virtual amp for live now. Uh, it's just, it's just the future. Olive got and one. Olive got one of those yeah. amps. You got one that you can carry around. A virtual it's amp. Big. It's this. It's it's about. It's like half the size of my head. And it's beautiful. It sounds better than a real amp. So, what will the stage setup be uh, for playing these songs? Uh, do you have additional musicians, or do you have to change your gear up? We have a drummer. That's it. Um, I think with the, I mean, our, our tracks are so vocal focus all of the time. So it's kind of the, what's really important is just having the two of us out front there and then Scout plays bass. I play guitar. We have a drummer and then everything else goes through track. Um, just a bunch of different multi-track backing tracks that we sync to the live performance and we play to. Um, and they do all the synths, all the keys, all the lead guitar parts and percussion. Um, it's a whole operation, um, <laughs> but it's pretty good, I would say. Like, it's very, it's very freeing. Having a three-piece on stage is very freeing. Um, it's less people to worry about. Yeah. So when you're writing songs, do you consider how you're going to perform them live or worry about that later? I, I feel like I envision it. Like I think about when I'm writing, I'm like, what's this gonna sound like live? But it's not important, important, if that makes sense. Like we're not gonna make a decision during the writing process based on what it would be like live. It's more like a d live will adapt to the recording rather than vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. I would say um, we've really tried to take the approach now of creating like create recreating a song live in a way that works live so i think sometimes we would just do something because that's how it worked in the recording and i think more and more we're learning that things sound different live 
And so sometimes, you know, especially with drums, we've really been realizing, hey, I know in the chorus of this song, we stay on the hi-hat, but let's go to the ride live because actually it sounds way better. And harmonies, like guitar parts, all of that, we're really trying to figure out how to make that song work live. And it can be really different and that's okay. It's funny that you say that though, Scout, because I feel like very, re like we had that philosophy up until very recently when we started using a lot more tracks live and we we're like, hey, if we actually play it really well and we have all these other tracks going on, we can play it just like it is in the recording. But I mean, it, it varies track to track. But I think you I, it. I think I think it's a different way of doing it though. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So if money, same, same but different. If money was uh, no issue, what would an egoism gig look like? Uh, uh, I would say to like neither of us would be playing an instrument all the time, so we'd only play an instrument when we wanted to play an instrument. And then there'd be musicians for everything else um, on stage playing it. So it'd be like we'd have a we'd have a dedicated drummer and bass player, and then we'd have another probably a, another guitarist, and they would just be doing everything, and we'd just be like playing guitars on the songs that are fun to play guitar, and then just singing the rest of the time. Just the least stressful thing, the thing we can like focus on performing the most, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And I'd also get like custom made a Britney mic, you know, those ones that go around to their yes. quality. Because I've, I've heard from everyone, they're all like, oh, they're all crappy quality. And I'm like, well, if money was no object, I would get one of them. But like, a, yeah. I'd get like, some beautifully made, like perfectly sounding one. And I get me and Olive to have one. So I could do like a cartwheel in the middle of a song. But it's like our music. So some of these, like, it would be completely weird because it would be, I'd be like, I wish you were happy. Wish you were. That's what with those, they can't, they, they can't, um, you gotta have a completely quiet stage for those mics. So if you go to like, that's the, what I mean. I'm saying money is no object. I'm gonna hire oh, an okay. audio engineer to like oh. invent one. That's the whole all right, thing. All right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, assuming if uh, Australia keeps the uh, COVID cases down, um, what are the plans for the rest of the year and into 2021? <laughs> say yes to everything that's what i think really like you want to play a gig we'll do it like it's done i don't know yeah. i mean because the the studio tracks are going to come out just as just as quickly like we're not going to slow down with that at all um so it's pretty much just all down to the live aspect really like and we'll just keep doing it what's the grand plan for for egoism the grand plan is to dominate the world. We want to... Um, Pretty much. I, I mean, what like, else can we say? Like, what else? Like, it's, like, it's like, I want to be, I want to be a band on, on so many, like, random, depressed teenage, 14-year-old's bedroom walls. That's what I want. You know what I mean? I want to be one of those bands that, like, they listen Are to... Arena music. shows. Arena shows. You know, what I, I just... Why not? Uh, so if people want to listen to or buy um, the uh, EP, uh, where should they go? Um, I would say go to Bandcamp. We get the most money that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you can- But we're on everything. Listen, yeah, we're on everything. Listen to it on whatever you want. Like, it really doesn't matter. Add us to your playlist that you play all the time. Like if you work somewhere that you just play music constantly, <laughs> add all our songs. That's great. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. Yeah. All right, Olive and Scout, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, all the best with the EP. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having us.